Good morning, guys. Welcome. Another beautiful day that the Lord has made. Today is September 18th, 2022. We are coming to your houses who's watching it online from San Jesus Campus, which is in Brazil. Good morning to you guys that are here, uh, united together with us. Uh, before we begin with our worship, uh, please don't be shy. Grab a cup of coffee. I just did so full of energy. We also have a hot water for some tea. We have some uh, cookies as well. Before we begin, I would like to share how many baptisms and decisions. So we have five more baptisms. So this is total of 977 baptisms for the year of 2022. We also have 119 decisions. 919 people decided to give their life to Jesus, which is uh, really good news. And it's one of the reasons for us to rejoice. It's a total of 4,930 decisions this year in 2022. So uh, let us stand up. Ah, you're already standing up. This is great audience. We don't have to tell you what to do because you already know. We're going to stand up. We're going to start worshiping. Before we worship, we're going to pray. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for this beautiful day that you've provided, that you created for us, Heavenly Father. We know that you have not only many blessings, but you want to speak to our hearts, Heavenly Father. Speak to us. So when we live here, we are full of your presence, your heavenly reality that we can go and we can spread and share with those that are, those that are around you, around us, Heavenly Father. We thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's worship. church let's praise the lord together are you excited are you ready so come on let's pray
for fire and wind of the Holy Spirit. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. Fire and wind, come and do it again. Open up the gates, let heaven on in. Come rest on us. Come rest on fire winds, 
this room. session but it's a day of uh, gratitude intercession <coughs> is gratitude and you know why intercession is gratitude because when we intercede we don't go from the platform of uh, oh what if mm -mm. we have the assurance of what has been conquered for us by our love Jesus, our loved one. He has conquered all of this that is in your list of intercession. And what is your and what is my role in all of this? Your role is just open your mouth and thank for that. Be grateful for what you have not yet received here in your eyes. 
but this has already been done there in the kingdom. Ah, uh, how it's gonna come here? It depends on how you're gonna ask for. This is intercession. We go into intercession from the platform of winners. We don't come like, oh Lord Jesus. No, we come, thank you Jesus. Thank you for what you have conquered for us on the cross. That's our point on intercession. And that's the gratitude we are going to start now. Maybe for you, especially you at home, maybe the gratitude is that you made it through the night. I've been there. I've been in a intensive care and I made it through the night. I woke up and I was like, yes, Jesus, one more day. And now, maybe that's what you're thinking for. Maybe today is because you have overcome fear for the first time. Yes, Jesus, I put that thought under my feet. Maybe it's because you've been facing a very serious battle in your mind. Should I live? Should I go? Should I stay here? What is my purpose? Yes, Jesus, you have overcome that for me. Let's start visualizing what we have already received. That's where we start our intercession. I'll invite you to close your eyes. Nothing mystic about it, but it helps us to connect a little bit. You close your eyes and we go and we come to the Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for sending us Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for everything that you have overcome for us. All that you have conquered. Thank you, Jesus, because by your wounds we were healed. So today, your congregation, your people, your church coming to your presence, thanking you, Jesus, for the healing, for the healing power that you put on us, that you have conquered for us on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, for all the emotional healings that is being happening now. And I say, with all the authority given me on the cross, no more. Thoughts of suicidal, no more. Thoughts of rejection, no more. In the name of Jesus, I'll thank you for that, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you because you gave us the Holy Spirit and he's helping us here. Thank you for our beautiful expansion, global expansion plan that we have in this church, that your Holy Spirit is as a wind firing up us all over the road. And I'll say more increase in the heart of all of us for us to put our efforts into this beautiful plan of yours to conquer the whole world. Thank you, Jesus, because we are going to have our prayer meeting next Friday on the 23rd. It's the spring prayer meeting. It's spring. It's a new season. It represents so much here on earth, but I know it's for you on heaven as well and we thank you for that for your fire that's gonna be over there we thank for our church we thank for the moving of god into our elections into our nation in the name of jesus as the song we sing before says put your fire your wind of fire in your peace and love all over this time in our nation. In the name of Jesus, I'll thank you for the country, Argelia, that we are praying this week. In the name of Jesus, that your Holy Spirit might be empowering people, the Christians over there, to conquer that nation for you, Lord. Thank you very much. And humility, but knowing who we are as children of God, we come into your presence and we say thank you. Your heart, he knows no
guys thank you good morning again you may be seated now it comes to the another part of our worship which is called tithes and offerings today I would like you to open your Bibles whether on paper or digital in the book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 and today we're going to do a little bit differently I would like to pray before and then we're going to talk about the verse let your Bibles be open at Matthew 6 verse 33 before we read I would like to ask you to close your eyes let us pray once more we pray the Heavenly Father I pray in the name of Jesus that your spirit falls upon every single person that is sitting here when Jesus was baptized and he came out of the water the sky was was split open and the dove which represented the Holy Spirit descended and sat on the shoulder of Jesus and never left I pray in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit comes down from the heavens on us on every single person sitting here I pray that you're empowered by the reality of heavenly realm of your father who loves you so much and he wants only the best for you and I pray in the name of Jesus that his presence does not leave your thoughts, your work, everything that you think about is think about your father. Think about the Lord, the creator of the universe, the Lord that we serve, the God with a capital G that we serve, that created everything that is around us, that gave his only son to die on the cross for our sins. And I pray in the name of Jesus, that his Holy Spirit settles himself on your shoulder and I pray in the name of Jesus that you live your lives in this reality knowing that you have his power and his authority and you use it for the good of your father everything that you do that you think that you will achieve is going to be for the glory of the Lord that I pray in the name of Jesus amen now in Matthew 6 33 it says but seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well in the chapter 32 it says that the people that don't know the Lord pagans they were running after many different things and the Lord knows that those things that they were running after we need things that you have to have for your daily life you need them so we don't have to run after them our attention is always on the Lord because he is a good father and he will provide whatever that is needed in our lives as Tatiana was saying before our church has a large outreach to countries places that I have no idea about so maybe you don't either maybe you do I don't know but tithes and offerings is a moment of gratitude gratitude that the Lord provided us with so we can impart and we can share with others we don't have to share every single time we see someone on the street we can it's okay but there are people that are in a very bad condition farther from here that I have no idea about but this church 
has this outreach to places that I have no idea about. So that's why one of the reasons we give tithes and offerings. We show gratitude to the Lord for everything that He provided us with. And we pray that the church is going to use everything that we give wisely for those that are in need. So for those that are at home or watching online, you have all the necessary information on the screen or you should. For those here, you already know this envelope. We only have also have the bank accounts here we have the box here we also have the box in of up front with the debit card machine so I encourage you please first seek the kingdom and then everything else will be given to you in the name of Jesus amen thank you I invite you to stand up again let's praise together in gratitude God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. Time and time again, you have proven you do just what you said. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will. Será tua história testificará que eres la verdade, a pesar de la fuerte tempesta firme estaré e aprenderá este coração a confiar.
He's faithful. He's faithful. Are you happy? Yes. Come on, now we're talking. Ah, oh, I'm so happy. Heaven is rejoicing over your life. Did you know that? Because you're here. And there's no special thing about this a building in particular, this church or anything like that. Um, I love this quote from Pastor uh, Fabio Buquerque, Fabon. His, actually, it's his grandfather used to tell him that. When he was young, he said, he, he told me that when I was a teenager under uh, Fabio's leadership. He said, my grandpa always told me on Sunday morning, let's take the church to the church. In other words, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that's why the Lord is rejoicing, and that's why he's so happy. Not because you're here in this particular place, but because you being here represents that you are valuing and treasuring the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. And that's really important. That tells a lot about your heart, your intentions. And you who are watching us online, regardless of where you are, you're tuned in. So that is special as well. So get your hopes up. Get excited. I'm really, really excited about today's message. We're in this series called The Meaning, What's the Meaning of Life? And, and talking about the meaning of life, it's no easy, light subject. It's very deep and very profound. And I love that we get to talk about these things on a Sunday morning where everybody's just so happy that they woke up early and it's so cold. It was a joke. Anyways. Um, before we dive into the message, two quick important things for you to know. Number one, we have our outline both in Portuguese and in English on the church's mobile app. So you can go to the more section on the bottom of the app, go to downloads, and you're going to find both it in Portuguese and English. So if you're learning either of the languages, you can just go there and follow along. Now second, in Last but not most, least important thing, we have our city groups happening every Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday evening, it happens at my place. So you're more than welcome to join us. Uh, just talk to me in the back. Uh, I'll share you the address and all the information. And you can come along. It's in person. Uh, it's amazing. Great food. Uh, there's people here who attend the meeting and they know what I'm talking about. Always great food, so you'll love it. Now, on Wednesday, we have one which is online. Um, so if you're not from around, such as you're watching us online, and I hope you're not from Intel, because otherwise you should be here. Anyways, so if you're from abroad or a different uh, city, state, or whatever, there's an online meeting every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Brazil time so that we have more people coming in and joining. So for that one, you can also talk to me on the back or you can either uh, send us a message on Instagram. Uh, so you can follow the international ministry there and send us a message. Hey, I want to know more about the city groups. Amen? Join. Don't miss it out. If you're missing it out, it's your loss. Honestly. It's your loss because it's always amazing. It's always fun. It's always good for connecting with others, enjoying God's presence, eating good food. Anyways, make sure you're not missing it out. Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. All righty. What is the meaning of life? So today's message number five. How many of you have watched either of one of the previous four? Anybody? Any message? Okay. So if you missed it, go to YouTube and you catch up with the messages because it's been amazing. Okay. Don't miss it out. It's, it's just mind blowing. I love it. 
So today we're talking about something that um, it's super important and sometimes we just miss it from our daily lives. We've talked about number one, what drives you? Number two, everything begins in God. Number three, you are not an accident. Number four, which was last week, you were made for eternity. And today is your life here is temporary. I know that this kind of, like, it kind of sounds um, redundant or repetitive, but you get it once we get to the end of the message. Um, okay, I'm, no spoiler. I'll, I'll, I'll stick to my script here. Anyways, so as we're diving into this series, what is the meaning of life? Well, this is the question for humankind, isn't that right? We've seen generations and generations across centuries and in, in no time limit frame for this one. Everybody's trying to get to the bottom of this subject. Everybody's trying to find an answer to this question. What is the meaning of life? Why are we here? What are we doing here? Are we alone in this space? That's kind of thing we're trying to answer here in a way. I'm not going to talk about life on Mars. All I'm going to talk about is you. We have enough trouble without life on Mars. Amen? Okay, so let's stick to the bottom of the things here. Bottom line. We need to find and understand the real meaning of our lives. Why are we here? What are we supposed to be doing with our lives? Are we missing the target? And as we're diving deep into this ocean of questions about all of these matters and all this subject, it's very easy to miss the target if we start this and finish it by focusing on ourselves. Of course, you need to start it from somewhere, and there's no better place to start with this question than yourself, because I don't know what to do with this, right? Am I supposed to go this way? Am I supposed to go that way? What type of decision do I need to take? What do I need to do with, um, with the gifts and the skills and everything? What do I do with my life, basically? I don't know if you've ever been in this crossroad. I have. And it ain't easy. And when we start with this, we understand that we are too limited in ourselves that we need to broaden the scope a little bit. In other words, it may start with you, but it's not going to finish with you. You don't have this answer alone. It's not, it's not about you. I'm sorry. It's not about you. I got to tell you this up front. It's not about us. It's always about someone else. What does that mean? Well, first and foremost, it's all about Jesus. It's all about God and a relationship with him. Once we start admitting this, once we start under, understand this, things start to change. Our perspective shifts a little bit. And we can truly truly now find the right track to look for the answers. Psalm 119 verse 19. It says, I am a stranger on earth. Let me pray for you. Jesus, as we're seeking to answer this question, please come help us. Because we know it may start with us as we're questioning what should we do with life? What should we do? What, what, what is the purpose of our life? What are we here for? As it starts with us, we're humbly admitting and understanding that we do not have the answer to this question. Therefore, we're coming before you, Father, and we're saying, please talk to us today. Reveal to us your truth about this matter. Explain it to us. Teach us more about it. Holy Spirit, please come and speak to our hearts. As we are unveiling your word, please unveil your heart to us. In Jesus' name, we consecrate this time to you. We ask you 
to speak to us, Father. Use me as a vessel, but speak to me first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am a stranger on earth. So today's message is very interesting as it says, your life here is temporary. I guess we all know that. We just don't know the time span of the temporary, right? Some people, they, they are very excited about this to figure out like this time length. They kind of push it and they jump ahead on the line by being very reckless and irresponsible a lot of, about a lot of things. But I'm not in a hurry. I respect the time and season that the Lord has assigned to my life. So I just enjoy everything I have right now. And um, as we look, uh, it, it's just, there's no way I can help you picture the difference between our lifespan and eternity. If you can, um, let's say, picture here this, the, the edge of the stage, right? Let's say this is eternity. It's not. Just play along, okay? Anyways, so this is eternity. Now, let's say you're going to live for 150 years. God bless you if you do. But anyways, so here's the thing. Can you see the tip of my shoe right there? This it's small, right? That's 150 years. This is eternity. Did it help a little bit? Kind of, right? But now imagine that it's just, your life is just so, so small in terms of, if you compare the time length, in terms of duration, that when you look to eternity, you cannot see its end. It's almost looking at, you're at the harbor, looking at a ship sailing to open waters. It will go, 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 and it will, it will fade away. Not because it fell over the edge, but because the earth is round. Anyway. So, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you got the joke, good, good to you. So, here's the thing. Um, when you look at eternity, it's almost you taking a picture, a snapshot, a frame of second from a, like, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, three hours movie. One snapshot. We can't even conceive if it plays 60 frames per second, you grab one frame, and now you multiply three hours per second times 60. That's just your life. Yet, we're so entangled about our lives, right? Oh, we love our homes. We love going to the beach. We love barbecue. If you don't, I do. I'm just talking about myself. I just, yeah, I love it. You know, just laying on the beach, enjoying the, oh boy. Okay, let's get back. So, we love all of those things, don't we? Or you could enjoy cold weather. Like yesterday, my family and I, we, we went with some relatives who were visiting. We went to Campus du Jardin. It was so cold. I was not prepared. It was just so cold. But maybe you love that. My wife, she lived in London. She was walking around, like, you know when you breathe, like, and, it, and you see that, it's like, st almost like steam coming out of your mouth. And you just see that. It's like, oh, I missed it, just this, Jesus. Thank you. And I was like, ah, ah, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm happy you're happy, baby. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. You know how it goes. This, this, this is, if you want the secret for a happy marriage, this is it. Happy wife, happy life. You're welcome. So, we were freezing, but she, she was enjoying it. She was having a, like, a, a blast. So, there's, there's, you know, everybody has its tastes and, and that's okay. We're all good. But sometimes we just get so entangled with this. Now we miss, because we're looking at a snapshot, we're missing the big picture. You're missing the whole movie. Because you're hold on to something, but you forget that this is just so small. It's almost having a screen like this 
It's super cool LED screen, right? Imagine watching a movie, one down watching a movie. It's just amazing, so cool. But you got your phone and you're so lost in your phone that you do this. And everybody else is watching it on the big screen and you're like, oh, but yeah, it's not, it's not so nice, but anyways, it's good enough. And you're here, and everybody else is enjoying this, and you're missing it. Sometimes we do that. And I love this opening verse, I am a stranger on earth. Colossians 3, 2, it says, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. And as I was sitting there, I always, I take my notes before coming to the service. And when I'm sitting there doing worship, I'm always talking to the Lord. This is how I do it. This is my process. And I'm like, Jesus, what do you want to talk about it today? What, what's, your, what's your angle on this message? What, what do you see? And I saw this image like three times. I was sitting there and I saw this like a, a coat, like a cloak coming over me. And I was like, wow, that's nice. So what do you have about the message, Jesus? And I see the same picture again. And I was like, amen, you know, new garment, whatever. Jesus, what about the message? Is there something you want to share it with them? And I almost felt the Lord saying, just like everybody else, you're missing the point. And I said, okay, what about the cloak? I give up. And then it, it just unveiled before me. I felt him saying, you along to everybody else, you should be putting on your traveling coat because you're not there yet. You need to be ready for this journey because you're, this is not the end. We're not there yet. But there's a lot of people who are living their lives as if this earth was their final destination. You need to be ready. Pack. Put on your traveling coat. Get ready to depart. Because your time here, you're just a traveler. So now you're, you may be missing the whole point by focusing on the amazing things that this world has to offer. I'm not saying go crazy, like sell your house. and the, No, 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 no. Balance. All I'm saying is don't let yourself be entangled by those things to the point of missing the target. I really felt the Lord saying, I want to put on everybody their traveling coat to help them refresh their memory that they're just strangers on this land. You're just passing by. Don't miss the target. Don't let yourself be entangled. Last week, we talked about how you were made for eternity. I'll give you a very simple example. In two weeks, I'm traveling for work. It's uh, on the uh, first week of October, I'll be traveling. So I got the tickets. I got everything. I know I am traveling, right? I applied for the thingies and the processes and all of that. I know it's a fact. I travel on a Sunday evening. So the way sometimes we're living our lives is just like, I'm, I know I'm traveling Sunday evening, but there's... It comes like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I don't pack. I don't say goodbye. I tell no one I'm leaving. And sometimes it gets to the point that I can forget or not live this truth that I'm not going to travel, that I'll miss the airplane. Maybe in our lives... 
we forget how temporary it is. And we get so entangled with so many causes and things in our lives here that we forget that there's a plane we're going to catch. We need to be ready. I want to be ready. I don't want to miss the plane. Therefore, there's things I need to do. First and foremost, get your plane ticket. Tell Jesus, Jesus, I know that you died for me on the cross. So I accept you in my life, in my heart. That's step number one. Get your ticket. Then pack your bags. Put on your traveling coat. There's a journey happening. The plane is about to take off. Yet, we're not ready. As someone who is only passing through this life, you must remember that, number one, God has something greater for you. If you're taking notes, take notes. If you're not, I encourage you, or you can grab the outline. Philippians 3, verses 19 and 20. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen to this very first sentence. Their destiny is destruction because their God is their stomach. Is there, like, have you ever been hangry in your life? Do you know what's hangry? It's when you're angry because you're hungry. That's hangry. You're laughing because you have. So you should turn to the person right next to you, if you have someone next to you, that it's close to you, and apologize right now. Because you've may be, you may have become a, a tiny little monster to that person when you were hungry. That's hangry. It happens to us all the time. Many times, it's close to lunchtime or the afternoon snack or whatever you want to call it. And we're driving around doing something. And, and like Madi, like she can tell that I'm not well. I'm angry. And there's lots of bad drivers on the street. And I'm like, look at that guy. What is he doing? And, and like, on the, like on the third outburst of anger, she goes like, you're hungry, aren't you, love? And I just tell her, yes, I am. <laughs> and it happens the other way around as well, okay? She's not here, but it happens as well. So we all get hangry. When, and the reason I'm telling you this funny thing is because when, when the verse says their God is their stomach, when you're starving, nothing else matters. The worst hamburger in town becomes the best hamburger you ever had. Everything changes because you have this desire. I pray that you've never been in a situation where you have starved. But if that happened to you, and I've been in through that, it's not easy. There's nothing else on your mind. You just need to solve that problem. It drives you. And what it says here is that their deepest desires and impulses are their God, which is not our case. You're no longer hindered by those things. Jesus' sacrifice has set you free to the point that you can understand who you want to please. And there's only one worthy of your praise. That's Jesus. Only him. When you understand that, you can truly see that this is greater. Greater than your desires. Greater than, than everything you can conceive. God has greater things for you. Our true identity is in eternity with God. Second Peter 1.11, it says, And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God has greater things for you, my friend. Don't abandon your traveling coat and your bags and your ticket to go chase something else. 
Number two, as someone who is only passing through this life, you must remember that you cannot be double-minded. You cannot be double-minded. James 4, 4, it says, do you know, don't, don't you know, I'm sorry, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. It's not about you losing your salvation, okay? It's not about that. I'm not going to go dive into this matter. We don't believe you lose your salvation. If you want to talk about this, reach out at the end of the service. I'll talk to you. But the point is, why miss the relationship? Honestly, there's nothing in this world that gets even close to the peace, the love, the joy, the grace, everything that comes from the presence of God. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to try it. You need to taste it. It's the best thing ever. I could spend a day here talking to you about how good it is. It's not going to come even close. Because God loves you in a way, and he will reveal himself to you in a way that it's particular to you. And that is beautiful. And nothing can replace that. Nothing could even come close to that. Dear friends, I urge you as foreigners and exiles to abstain from your sinful desires, which wage war against your soul. 1 Peter 2.11, 1 Corinthians 7.31, for this world in its present form is passing away. Everything here is just, is just going to pass. Everything is just a test. We have received an assignment. We have a task to fulfill in this earth. And we need to understand that we're just strangers in a foreign land. Don't act as if you're staying here forever. Because you're not. Even if you, if you, if you you'd come to me and say, hey, I don't believe in God. I don't have Jesus. Don't believe that this will last. It will all come to pass. It will. 2 Corinthians 4.18, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. 2 Corinthians 4.18, last now, but not least, number three. Some truths about earthly life show that there is, that here is not your permanent home. Second Corinthians 4, 17, 18. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. You know, sometimes we're going through life and we're going just through so many struggles. So many struggles. What, what I can assure you is that all of this is temporary. Either because you're going to see the end of this suffering and you're going to see your victory coming yet here on this season during your trip. Or you will see it when you reach the glory and reach the Father. Either way. So the main take here is everything is temporary. If the bad things are taking over your mind, taking over your life, 
If you feel overwhelmed, it's not over yet. As we're coming to the end of this message, I want to share with you a story. Maybe you've heard this story, maybe not. But I believe this to be a very good example, a very good metaphor. A missionary was returning home when he reached 70. He was retiring. After many, many years serving as a missionary on the field, working, preaching, sharing the, sharing the gospel, he was returning home. And during the flight, he was thinking about this whole journey, everything he experienced and lived with God and the testimonies and everything that happened on the field. All the church planted, every life that was saved, changed, transformed. It's beautiful. He was just rejoicing over that. And when they started the, the landing process, like the plane was getting closer to the city, lowering altitude and all of that, as they were getting closer and closer to the airport, he could see a multitude gathering close to the place where he pictured it would be the place where the, the plane would stop. And then he saw the multitude and he was like, well, is that, is that the church who came and gathered to receive me back home? to rejoice with me and that was this crowd and the plane lands it goes all the way to the process then you know what I'm talking about it gets to the hangar close to the place then bring in the those like stairs for the people to come off and as he was coming out of the plane he was excited wow there's a crowd waiting for me and once we get he gets out there it turns out that the guy who was right in front of him on the line, he was a famous singer, famous singer. And the crowd was expecting the singer. And everybody followed the singer, happy. And he was so disappointed. He got off the plane, grabbed his things, was just walking. He was like, Jesus, what, like, I thought there would be people waiting for me here. I thought we would have a party or something to celebrate that. And then he felt the Lord speaking to him. You're not home yet. I have a party waiting for you. You're just not there yet. Wait until you get home. We'll be waiting. I really don't know if this is a true story or not, but it's the perfect example. Sometimes it's the story I need to tell myself. God, what are we doing? It's not easy. I mean, it's just sometimes it's, it's overwhelming. We're so tired. We're doing so many things. Why are we just playing by the book and doing everything right? Nobody noticed. I don't know if you ever questioned that about on your heart. There's no problem in asking the question. The real thing comes after the question. If you decide to remain with your traveling coat on and you picture, God, I know, I don't want to miss that flight. I don't want to miss it. I want to be there, ready. Would you stand up, please? Joseph, if you look at his story, he was crushed by circumstances over and over again. In everything he ever faced, he remained faithful. He would not let it go and just say, God, I'm done. No, he was not there yet. John the Baptist, he was so loyal. He preached. He did everything that the Lord required from him. Yet his end to our sight, to, to the point where we can look at to, 
And it was not pretty. So maybe you're here today and your circumstances, they're telling you otherwise. You know, don't, don't focus on those things. Bunch of useless things. Don't waste your time on that. But I'm here to poke you, to disturb you a little bit and invite you to put you on your traveling coat. Grab your bag. Let's go. There's no... I'll, I'll tell you this. When I came back to the church after years of being astray, coming to some events, attending a service here and there, not really belonging, this was years ago now. I was really, really divided because I, I have completely put away and set aside my traveling coat. I had my ticket. I knew the destination, but I was not even close to being ready for the trip. And when the time came, Jesus was so gentle. He was so kind. He approached me and said, man, you've been away for too long. We have to speed up a few things and fix a few things. You know, I have a plan for you. And you can, if you follow me, you can go through two ways. There's one way where you will be a good Christian, quote unquote, due to the lack of a better word here, a better expression. You're going to come and serve. You're going to do things for the kingdom. You're going to be super blessed. It's going to be amazing. And I will rejoice over your life. I will. But that's one way of doing things. And I was, okay, so what's the other way? I'm curious now. And you know what he said? He said, the other way. And then I, I felt the warmth of his smile. He was, the other way. Hmm. And that's a trip. It's going to be you and I. It's not very predictable. You're going to hand me the steering wheel. And I'll drive us around doing many crazy things. It's going to be amazing. Well, I said, you gave me no alternative. Let's go for the trip. I want to deeply let go of everything that entangled me in this world. And I want to hold on to you, Jesus. That day, I gave him everything, everything that I am, not just my eternity and my heart here. I said, everything, take control of everything. Matthew 6, 33. I said, I will let go of everything else and I will hold on to your kingdom. And I did. And it was the best thing ever. It was the best thing ever. He changed everything. It was crazy. It was crazy. But now, I'm always ready for the ride. Always. We have seen lives transformed. We have seen cities, nations being impacted, not because of me, but because of the Jesus who lives in me. Jesus is inviting you today. He's saying, do you want to come? Enjoy this ride? Do you want to come and board this trip? It's going to be amazing. But you need to understand that your life here is temporary. And that's not just a sentence. It's a reality 
that comes with, with this reality comes a, a sense of urgency. What in my life is replacing the love and the space that belongs to Jesus? And if you start looking at your life, it's easy to see because it's just going to be so much worse. It's going to fall short of what the presence of Jesus can represent in your life. This is an invitation that I have for you today. Do not walk away here from this, like from this building without asking yourself this question. Are you ready for the trip? Would you close your eyes and bow your head? I want to pray for you. Jesus, we're here saying yes. You know our hearts. You know who we are. You love us in a way that we cannot understand or express. And we are here today, Father, saying, yes, yes. Come, Holy Spirit, and, and tell us what to do. Tell us what to fix. Change us. Help us to truly understand this truth and live it. Allow this truth to shape our identity so we can truly become more and more like you, Jesus, not entangled by things that will pass but holding on to your kingdom. And this will allow us to see your transformation come and change everything from within us to around us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Still with your eyes closed and your heads bowed, I want to invite you, I want to share with you some opportunities. Number one, the very first step on this journey as I was telling you a story, it's like getting the ticket. And the ticket is already paid for. You only need to, have to grab it, to take it, to print it out. And that very first step is saying, Jesus, I want you in my life. If that's you, if you want to give your life to Jesus today, I'm giving you the opportunity. I'm just a middleman. This is between you and Jesus. Would you raise your hand so I can pray for your life? Is there anybody here who wants to come back to Jesus? Or maybe you've walked with him already, but for some reason you went astray. You were too attached to the things in this world. You, you, you just, you've just forsaken Jesus for a season. I don't know. Is there anybody here who wants to come back to Jesus? Would you raise your hand so I can see and bless you? I see you now. I bless you in Jesus' name. Is there anybody else who wants to come back to Jesus? Maybe you want to be baptized. I don't know if you have given your life to him already or if you've, you just came back to the Lord, but you're not baptized in waters. Is there anybody here who wants to be baptized? You understand that? Amen. Let us pray. Father, I rejoice with you this morning because... We understood your message. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for speaking to our hearts. I bless those who raised their hands now, Father, in Jesus' name. May you bless them. May you write their names in the book of life. Bless them so they can rejoice your presence and be filled by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Next week we have message number six. Don't miss it out. And Jesus, and I'll miss it out. It's going to be amazing. This journey has been amazing. I'm really happy, really rejoicing it. Um, after the last song, we're going to have people here in the front to pray for you. If you want to come and receive a specific prayer. Uh, those, if you raised your hand during this moment, I'll be in the back waiting to talk to you. May the Lord bless you. Have an amazing Sunday and have an amazing week. I'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, Lord, we praise you. Sounds like we praise you, we praise you.
This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. We'll see you break down every wall. We watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we praise you, Lord. Have a blessed week, full of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. God bless you.